With his boyish charm and his jovial spirit, Matt Fuller was just fun to watch. In a career that has spanned since the start of the millennium, Fuller perfected the role of the bumbling pool boy next door. A regular Joe that just happened to be a movie star and singer. You know, really, the whole country fell in love with Matt. He couldn't go anywhere. Everywhere he went, people were mobbing him. But not only was he famous, he was also my best friend. But the attention got to Fuller, and against his best control, Fuller could not resist against his destructive desires, dating both men and women, including Harvard professor Dr. David Torben, and people's most attractive woman alive, Linda Kay, Fuller set out to redefine sexuality. He was amazing in my opinion, in uh, both music and in film. But personally, he was pretty awesome. The dream of the Her life's ambition was to be Matt Fuller was born in the Super 8 Motel outside of Columbus, Ohio on October 29, 1984. His mother, an Iraqi prostitute, left him in the dumpster behind the motel. The manager of the Super 8, Eugene Philip Fuller, found him and adopted him as his own son. Well, me and his mother did spoil him a little bit. Um, not his birth mother, of course. His birth mother was a whore. And that's probably why we spoiled him. You know, he would wake up in the morning and we say, Morning, son. Your mother's a whore. Here's a donut. I hope you feel better. Have a good day at school. I think it helped him. The Foolers lived in this shanty trailer until Matt was in high school and a tornado destroyed it. As a teenager, Matt dropped out of school and moved to Nashville to become a country music singer. Well, you know, he, he got there and he was going around the city and he started looking for gigs, but the guy just doesn't have enough twang in his voice. He, he doesn't know what it's like to have a dog die. He doesn't own a pickup truck. He didn't have what it took to be a country singer, and we all kind of knew it, but we didn't have the heart to tell him. On a cool day in 2000, while visiting friends in Atlanta, Matt was arrested for public indecency and failure to comply with a police officer. Well, we caught the perpetrator. He was streaking down on Park Avenue. Me and my partner arrested him. We put him in the cruiser, and then he said, quote, I've always wanted to do it, handcuffs on my hand, with a cop. Uh, my buddy says that what he actually said was his dad was a cop, but no, it was definitely with a cop. After spending the night in the drunk tank, Matt walked across the street from the police station and walked right into Hal McBird's office. Well, this slimy bloke walks right into my office and demands to see me. I say, who the hell are you? He says, well, I'm Matt Fuller, and I'm going to be a star. Well, I called security right away. But before they got there, he started laying down this funky tune. And he whispered to me, handcuffs on my hand, with a cap. It was bloody fantastic. I signed a record deal right there. Handcuffs on My Hands with a Cop became an instant best hit, topping the Billboard charts for 37 consecutive weeks. From his success with the song, Fuller was launched to international stardom. I met Matt at one of his concerts. I was in grad school at the time, and I had won backstage passes from some radio station. So we, uh, we hit it off, and next thing I know, I'm spending the weekends in Aspen and Paris with him. Matt's second hit, I Know, Right? also made the Billboard charts, winning him a Grammy in 2002. But with Matt's success also came something else, something darker. We had dated about a year and a half, and uh, I really thought things were going well. But then I caught him cheating on me with uh, supermodel Linda Kay. Linda Kay and Fuller dated for almost two months, when mysteriously she went missing. The news went crazy for weeks. Uh, headlines were, where's Kay? Was it the gay? Everywhere I went, people were accusing me, and it, it, I loved Linda. I had nothing against Linda. She was a very nice woman. Personally, I, I think it was Carrie Keyes. Keyes, Linda's assistant, had an airtight alibi for the night Linda Kay went missing. She was signing divorce papers with her ex-husband, Chris Jervis. I still think she played a part in it. I mean, look at her now. Immediately after Linda went missing, 
Carrie and Matt were dating. Fuller and Keyes began an on-again, off-again relationship in the spring of 2004. Fuller dedicated his second album, I Feel Like We Should, to Keyes, and later that year, on Fuller's 20th birthday, the two were married. The wedding was fantastic, actually. It was Halloween-themed for Matt's birthday, and everybody dressed up. Even the wedding party, I think, look, oh, Matt, get this, Matt was a pirate. That's awesome. Carrie was a sperm whale. How funny is that? She scared, what? Oh, she wasn't wearing a costume. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Well, Matt was a pirate, and he was such a good-looking pirate. Nelson Tree Stump was there, the, the uh, screenwriter and the producer. Um, at the time he was at the wedding, he was also writing this little no movie. Maybe you heard of it, Indigo Blackwater. Yeah, the big pirate movie. He was writing it then, and he saw Matt and said, there's my main character. Fuller played the lead role in Indigo Blackwater, a role that Fuller would take seriously. When E! True Hollywood Story continues, Fuller falls from glory. Do you even know what we're watching? season three. Now what do we do?